Hey everyone, welcome back to The Current. This is Real Talk on Real Topics. My name is Bo, I'm joined with Prudence. We are in a series on relationships and today we're going to be talking about marriage, which will be fun. We're both married, yes. which is exciting. I'd love to hear how you and Shelby met. Okay, well we are that like gross Bible college couple um, mm. and, and the way we got together was I kind of knew who he was, but you know, he was just like not on my radar and I think, you know, both ways. Um, but my roommate and best friend from college, like had a crush on his roommate and best friend from college. So we got dragged along with them to like all their like little like hangouts. And then we actually started dating and got married before they did. Um, wow. So, yeah. So how long from dating until marriage? <sighs> Kids, I'm embarrassed to share <laughs> this. Uh, I, I don't know if you beat me. You may not so be me. So we started dating <laughs> in February of, it would have been 2016 got engaged in September, but we like knew we were going to get married before he proposed. You know, we'd been talking about engagement. So literally the day he proposed, we already had like a deposit down on our wedding venue. Um, And then we got married in May of 2017. So we had only dated for like, what, like a year and three months before we got married. Uh, It was, it was really fast and it's stupid and I love my marriage well, and it's not the path I would recommend for most people, but it worked. I always have to use that disclaimer as well because mine is actually quicker. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, Abby and her family started attending my home church when I was off at college. Oh. I never met her, didn't know who she was. But of course, I was coming back all the time. I only went to college. Well, I went to junior college first. When I transferred to a different school, I was about an hour away. Okay. So I would always go home on the weekends or I'd, you know, obviously be there for breaks and spring break and Christmas break and over the summer. Um, So I went back one weekend with my roommate and I saw Abby for the first time sitting up with all the college students. They all kind of sat in the same area. Mm. I saw her sitting up there and I told my buddy, I'm like, I don't know who that is, but I want to get to know her. I might date her. You know, I was like, I'm interested in her. Go you. Well, I find out she's dating one of my best friend's older brother at the time. I didn't know that. So (laughs) I kind of just let it go. Um, But anyway, long story, stuff happened between them. Um, I ended up getting a girlfriend in the meantime. Stuff happened with us. Not good. So I, one night on Facebook, just sent her a message. Said, hey, what's up? (laughs) And so we started talking. (laughs) Um, That next weekend, I came home. We went out for ice cream with one of her best friends. It was the three of us. I felt bad for her. She was kind of the third wheel. But they're still good friends today. And, uh, yeah, we went out for ice cream. I think we went and saw a movie the same day. It was kind of our first date. And three months later, I proposed. Oh, my gosh. So I think it was like September. Yeah. So September we started dating. I pr- proposed a couple days after Christmas. Um, and then we were married in August. Okay. So, so yours was, was like, faster. Yeah. 11 months total time. Wow. And, again, I, don't, I would just say the same thing. I don't really recommend that. Um, but when you know, you know, sometimes yeah. I think like, yeah. So we were both just in a really good place. Yeah. We've both been through some really cruddy relationships and both were just kind of ready for like, I think we both had kind of surrendered to what God wanted. I mm-hmm. guess you could say we're kind of that position in our life. We're like, okay, we're kind of done with trying ourselves here. Like, you know, anyway, it was, it was really good. I love my marriage too. It's been great. So yeah, but yeah that's how we met. But I thought it'd be fun to talk about, you know, that of course, how we met, but then Maybe talk a little bit more about our marriages personally. I'll share a little bit, and then you can kind of share whatever you want. But wait, time out real oh, quick. How yeah. long have you guys actually been? Oh married yeah, yeah, now good, 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 good point. Yeah. Um, let's say, hold on, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> we got married. Um, I'll never forget it because it's eight one nine. So eight plus one is nine. So August the first of two thousand nine. So that means eleven years. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, eleven years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. eleven years. So it'll be twelve years this summer. Then. It'll be twelve years this summer. That's yeah. incredible. What about you guys? So we've been together, married like three and some change. So it'll be four years in May. Okay. Yeah. So we're good. still we're still babies at the whole marriage yeah. thing. No, yeah. Um, it's, I don't know. When we got married, everyone told us like the first year would be the toughest. We didn't really find that to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gotten more tough, I think, the last few years with our kids getting older. I mean, mm-hmm. kids just add such a different dynamic to marriages. Um, I don't know if we'll really dive into that part. There's so many things we could talk about. Yeah. In regards to marriage, but, um, yeah, um, I love marriage, believe in marriage. I think marriage is an institution that God has created. That's beautiful. And, um, yeah. So 
Um, I'll talk a little bit about my marriage yeah. now that we've talked about how long I've been married, <laughs> 11 years. Um, Abby and I are much different personality wise, mm. um, but we also came from very different family dynamics. And so I'll kick off by saying some of the biggest challenges we've had in our marriage is kind of navigating um, just how different our families are mm -hmm. and because obviously you're formed by that. You're kind of mm -hmm. formed and shaped by how you were raised, the type of marriage you saw your parents have, um, the type of just different you know, family dynamics, how you interact. That's been really challenging for us because um, I don't know if I necessarily idolized my parents, but I have just such a great admiration and respect for my parents. And obviously she did too. But how they interacted, how they raised us as kids – really shaped just who I am and how I really believed and thought this is how marriages work. This is mm -hmm. how our family should operate. And so, you know, being in a committed relationship with someone else who was not raised the same way and didn't have kind of the same, um, I don't know, things of importance, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. um, has made it tough. And, you know, I tell people now that I do, you know, premarital counseling a lot, um, you don't just marry the person, you do marry their family. And that's a big piece. And I think people forget that. Like it's, you know, you essentially become a part of their family. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's been a big, big challenge for us. And we'll talk more about kind of some things we've done um, to help with that. And some, some, I think some core just, you know, we don't have all day to talk about marriage today, but just some core just kind of what are some things that have really helped um, in my marriage and of course I'm, I'm sure you have some too mm. but that has been a big one um, obviously parenting always raises some challenges as well um, when kids are in the mix um, but that obviously doesn't apply to everyone and then um, yeah so there's been some challenges marriage is never easy but I will say I think the thing that has helped us at least is having a united front as far as our faith goes mm. and understanding that like Jesus is the center yeah. of our marriage. And that sounds so cliche, you know, because people said, oh, like, you know, Jesus is the center. But what does that mean? And I think that's kind of what we can focus on today Yes, is really coming from that. Obviously, that's our worldview is, is Christ centered. But what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like? Um, so, yeah, that was a little bit about my marriage. What about you? So, and Shelby. yeah. So I would say like very different than your guys' marriage. Um you know, one, we both came from broken homes. You know, okay. my parents divorced when I was super young, his when he was a little older. Um, and I think we both, because of different things with our families, had to grow up like really fast, mm. which is part of, I think, what enabled us to decide to get married so quickly because we were both serious. You know, we knew what we wanted in yeah. life. We'd experienced a lot of good stuff, but we'd experienced a lot of bad. And so we, we kind of knew what we were looking for or not looking for. And I think for us, our marriage, you know, and, and creating that foundation has been so much about like, we didn't really have examples or, you know, what we did get to see as kids, you know, growing up was not good or healthy. So we spent a lot of time uh, talking about and still talk about like what we want our marriage to look like. And for us, we had a really great uh, foundation. We had a couple um, from Bible college, a professor and his wife who did like premarital counseling with us. And that was so huge um just learning even more of that communication piece and figuring out i think was huge for us like how we work as individuals and then what works together uh, one of the things we did in premarital counseling was read this book um i think it's like men are from mars women are from venus yeah which is so yeah. cheesy but as we were reading through it we realized you know there are a lot of things that as you go through the book, like they're like, oh, this is like stereotypically like how the man's mind works. This is how the woman's mind works. And we found that we didn't really fit like all of those camps necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out like, OK, you know, maybe some of the, the way I interact with the world or deal with problems is maybe more masculine. Maybe, you know, the emotional um, depth he br brings to the relationship is considered maybe more traditionally, you know, feminine and figuring out really who we were not as defined necessarily by like these even traditional roles, but yep. really being able to see in each other the strengths and the weaknesses and embrace them. And so that has been um, super huge for us. I would just say that like first six months of like premarital counseling was so foundational for us and That's so cool. important. And, and for us, 
then finding role models like that couple, you know, that we can look to and say, okay, this is something I love and I want a piece of that in yeah. my marriage and I want to bring that in. Um, and a lot of that has been looking at people who love Jesus and love each other well because of it. Um, and for us, you know, I would say, like you said, I don't think necessarily the first year was the hardest, like everyone talks about, but I would say there have been like very big challenges every single year. Yeah, you know, the first for year. Sure we were together, he was a full-time student and working full-time. Wow. And I was in my first year of ministry and it was the first time both of us had lived in a different state from our families, Man. you know, and, and we've moved like a couple times since then. So, you know, I feel like every year is the hardest year for us, but it's also always the best year. And so just figuring out how to walk with each other and, and give and take and, and be that support when you need it and, and take that support when it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Um, you touched on this briefly, and I wanted to share this because there's you talked about kind of figuring out you and Shobi's, not necessarily your role, but maybe how God has wired you and made yeah. you and then what you can contribute to a marriage. Yeah. And so there is a couple different kind of major views mm -hmm. on marriage that the I think the church at least recognizes. Um, it's egalitarian and complementarian. Yeah. And so f me growing up, I only thought there was one way. Um, Same. And that was the complementarian view. How, you know, God created men, God created women, they're very different, and they have different roles and how they yeah. play in a marriage, and the man is the head of the household, and, and that's the traditional view, and maybe if you're listening, yeah. that is what you understand marriage to be, um, but I will say it was later on in, so I probably was, Abby and I's marriage probably was founded on that idea, but as we began to play it out, there really wasn't a defining moment for m us as far as like, and we talked a little bit about this as a staff yesterday, mm -hmm. um, there really wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't anybody that sat down with me and said, Bo, like the complementarian view of marriage is wrong. It was more about, we found the, the most healthy way that our marriage was playing out was the egalitarian view yeah. where we're equal and we're doing stuff together. And mm -hmm. that was a commitment we made, you know, um, early on is that we were going to do stuff together. It's not my wife's responsibility and the like traditional role to clean or cook and like do all that stuff. And for so long, that's how, you know, marriage is reviewed. And like, I guess the man just gets to come home and make the decisions. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. just, it's bull crap. And so anyway, so I was always helping clean and cook and do all those things. And we just found like, practically we were equals just yes. how it was playing out. But now I will firmly say that we hold to that view of marriage, the mm -hmm. egalitarian view, where we are equal. We make decisions together. We parent together. We cook together. We clean together. We share responsibilities as far as finances and everything else. Every part of our marriage we do together because we are equal. Um, and so I don't know if you have anything you wanted to say about that, but I, I just think that it's important that people understand there are different views. And, and, and I guess before I hand it off to you, I will say, like, if you hold the complementarian view of, of marriage, like, that's okay. It's not something I'd probably fight you over. But um, I would just challenge you and say, does it really, I don't know. I should probably stop there. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I definitely, you know, I, I think that people can come to the table as Christians with either view on marriage. Yeah. And, and it is okay or valid. It makes me cringe a little. Like, I definitely have a harsher view of complementarianism in you know, the idea of like, ah, yes, this man is going to lord over me and make all the, yeah. you know, it just feels really icky to me. But I will say that most people that I have seen that profess to have complementarian relationships it really functions more as egalitarian. Yeah. And so really, you know, the only piece I would say that I would add, you know, because I think you nailed it, you know, right on the head. And, and uh, obviously, you know, Shobi and I are in a very, I think, well-functioning egalitarian relationship is just that it, it is about being equal, but also acknowledging that like you have things that are unique that you bring to the table. Yeah, you know, sure. Shobi and I, we do different things. Like he does not do laundry because he has ruined some of my favorite clothing, you know, but he washes the dishes. But mm. I, you know, handle the finances, you know, like yeah. we figured out what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. And and we try to meet each other where we're at and, and honor each other and love each other and, you know, make the best out of this mess that is a relationship, yeah. you know, and <laughs> and it changes, you know, day to day. But I just think that that's a huge part of the egalitarianism is that, you know, you're still different. You're still unique. It's just maybe not you're different in the way you've always been told that you should be different as yeah. spouses. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I wanted to touch on really quick, you know, we mentioned this earlier on in the, in the podcast, how, you know, my 
marriage is Christ-centered, but what does that actually mean? And mm-hmm. what does that actually look like? Um, I would just say, like for Abby and I, I mentioned this earlier too, that, that we have very different personalities. But I th- what I think of when I, and you might disagree or have a different perspective, but when I think of like a Christ-centered marriage, I think about how Abby has qualities that are different than mine that mm-hmm. point me, or she's modeling Christ to me in ways that I couldn't do myself. Yeah. Like just how she is, just the person she is, the person God has made her to be. Um, she has some Christ-like qualities that I don't, yeah. or that I need to improve on. Not that I, you know, that I never will, because I think I can. I think I can possess some of those qualities she has, or to get better at some of those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like she has, or she brings something to the marriage that is very Christ-like. That then challenges me to be more Christ-like towards her and to our kids and our relationship. Um, and so that's what I'd say, like, when I think of like a Christ centered relationship, like she herself is owning her walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And since she is owning her walk with Jesus, it's therefore challenging me to own my walk with Jesus and then model Christ back to her in ways that may challenge her. That's what I think of when I think of a Christ centered relationship. And again, it sounds cheesy and it sounds like, I mean, you hear it all the time, just kind of in Christian circles, but I mean, what does that actually look like? What does it actually mean? Like, again, for us, we are very different people, but I think we we portray Christ-like qualities in our relationship that the other, I think, can benefit from or be challenged by. Yeah, no, that's so yeah. good. And, you know, to kind of bounce off what you were talking about, I... Um, I grew up kind of in in a Christian home with this idea of complementarianism. And, you know, I always pictured, you know, a Christ-centered relationship. Um, To give one example, my dad and my ex-stepmother, they used to, like, read the Bible every morning together. And then, like, on the way home after church on Sundays as a family, like, we would talk about, like, the sermon and what we learned. And so growing up, like, that's what I thought a Christ-centered relationship was. I thought it was, like, you listen to worship music in the car with each other and, like, (laughs) read the Bible together. And... That is like so not my jam like at all. Um, And and I think for me, like it has just been about that. That's so it's so cheesy to say, but continuing to ask that like WWJD, like what Mm. would Jesus do? How would Jesus love and honor this person? A couple nights ago, like we got into an argument and the temptation for me was to go off and sulk and not speak Mm. to him for the rest of the night. But but I knew that he needed compassion and grace mm. in that moment and he needed my presence. And so like I put on the WWJD hat and yeah. I, you know, I went and met him where he was and I, I tried to restore the relationship yeah. in that moment. And it's, it's that like self-sacrifice. And, you know, I will often like use that cheesy analogy of like, you just need to die to yourself and do the dishes. But really it's about just asking like, how can I love and honor this person in the way Jesus would do if he yeah. were here in that moment? Yeah. And even, I, even I, when they don't deserve it. Yeah, even especially, <laughs> especially when they when, don't deserve exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. And I will admit, nine <laughs> times out of ten, I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm the same way. And again, like that's it's a beautiful thing about marriage, I think, is exactly what you describe. And, and we should mention this. I mean, Jesus, when he talks about marriage, he talks about mutual submission. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people will use that, like what Jesus says, you know, that wives are just, or what's in the scriptures right. says wives will submit to husbands. Um, you know, but husbands also need to submit to their wives in the way Christ mm-hmm. does the church. And so there's a mutual submission there. It's yes. not one domineering over the other. It's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a mutual submission. It's a mutual respect. It's a mutual dying to yourself mm-hmm. to portray the way of Jesus to your spouse. And so that's so good. I love that. Um, I thought maybe too, like I just kind of closed a couple just practical things I feel like for us that have been really helpful Um, I mentioned already doing things together that has been just massively helpful Um, you know just committing to saying hey we're gonna do stuff together Mm -hmm. I mean you cook a lot so cook together you clean a lot clean together you have a lot of laundry to do do the laundry together Um, that's been really helpful but I think there's two pillars I would say for us at least have been trust and communication Mm -hmm. you know I have friends um, really close friends who desire to do things in their relationship alone or like they'll want to hang out with the guys and they feel like their wives don't trust them Mm. you know like they have to get permission first or like they have to ask or like make sure it's okay and I just think one thing that has been just really instrumental in in kind of my marriage is this ability to trust each other where it's like you can do whatever you want because I have complete trust that you are going to honor me and respect Mm -hmm. me and 
You know, you're not going to abuse the trust that I'm yes. giving you. And I feel like that's been really helpful and it hasn't created moments of like frustration for us because we are just over the top willing to and able to trust each other. Now, I understand there's relationship dynamics. Um, not every marriage has perfect. There's maybe been grace shown when others have broken trust. Mm -hmm. But I would just encourage you to exercise judgment there, but also err on the side of trust and grace um, because it speaks just volumes, I think, to your spouse, just the yeah. ability to trust them. Um, and then the next thing I would say is just communication. Um, uh, one of the things that I see just, again, being a pastor and meeting with couples is when communication breaks down, I think that's when even trust slips. Mm -hmm. I think that's when um, many other things in a, in a marriage can begin to slip when there's just no communication. And that tends to happen. Um, yeah. I think that's what kind of what Satan does really to ultimately like in the root, like the beginning stages of, of a marriage being kind of destroyed and there not being a strong foundation. I think communication tends to go away. Yes. Um, you're just kind of existing in the same space. There isn't this, you know, kind of emotional connection anymore. There's mm -hmm. not this, you know, spiritual connection. There's just no communication. And so if you can commit to keep those communication lines open and not just communicating to sit down and say, Hey, how was your day? But really communicating how you're feeling. I think is the, one of the most important things and being able to be heard. So communication goes both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just speaking, but it's listening. That's a big piece of communication. Yes. So offering yourself up to listen well. And then I always love to say like, repeating back to the person what you heard mm -hmm. is really important oh, yeah. too oh, yeah. yeah and so like so good like you're you're talking but like you know but being able to communicate back to them what you heard them say mm -hmm. also is really huge but but working on your communication skills i think is just a massive massive help to to any marriage and so if you have any more questions about like those two things i would say just practically mm -hmm. for marriages trust or communication i'd love to to help you if you need more guidance there so you can reach out and and i'd love to expand more on that um but what would you say do you have any of this practical oh gosh i mean i helpful? feel like you hit like the two big ones <laughs> I, I would say you know building on that two or three things i would say that are just super essential you know at least in my marriage and i'm i think this is probably accurate in yours one and this kind of goes with the communication piece but you have to grow together like yeah. i'm not the same woman i was on our wedding day. I'm not the same woman I was two weeks ago, you know, <laughs> sure. and Shobi has changed as well. And so continuing point. to get to know each other because I, I have seen too often in other people's relationships and their marriages, like there's a breakdown in communication when you start growing and you grow apart, you know? Mm. And so you just have to keep getting to know them. And I learn something new about Shobi <laughs> constantly. <laughs> I am just blown away. The things that I'm like, I had no idea. Like, you're a stranger to me still, um, <laughs> which, which is really fun. You know, yeah. like you can spend so much time with the person, especially in this pandemic when you're spending so much time with this one person um, and continue to get to know them. So that I think is huge. Just continuing to grow together, adapt together, change and, and communicate about that. Um, the other thing that I would say is really key. Um, it's like two things that kind of go hand in hand is learning to fight fair learning it's really good. how you know we are not we're not big like actual like fight about real stuff we're like more of a bickery couple um <laughs> which is when things can really get petty yeah. and so learning about your communication styles when you're fighting learning to talk about arguments afterwards when you're not in the heat of the moment mm -hmm. and especially at the beginning of your marriage i think and and processing them together and breaking down okay like this is where this went wrong um and that again goes to the communication thing but it's a really specific I love piece that. that's so important because yeah. it because you don't you will fight yeah you will yeah. fight <laughs> and and you need to understand like is your spouse the kind of person that needs to get it all out and hash it out right mm -hmm. there and then are they the kind of person that needs space you know so they don't blow up you know what what's your fighting style and then how yeah. can you kind of I don't want to say collaborate, but, you know, make your fights fair because there will be fights and they will be necessary. You know, you're going to have yep. conflict and you have to figure out how to resolve that. And then the other piece I would add to that is you just have to learn to say I'm sorry and you have to learn yes. to say I'm sorry and mean it. Yes. And that is still like a piece yes. that I'm learning. Like, I feel like even now I'm really good at saying I'm sorry quickly because I know that the relationship needs to be repaired. I know that this needs to be healed. But like, I don't always mean it. Like in the back of my head, I'm like, I still think I was right. And so yeah. that's something I'm still yeah. working through in my marriage. I'm so glad you said that because the marriages that I've and this is 
this is really sad. And this is why kind of Abby and I, we wanted to be more intentional this year about focusing on marriage and trying to influence marriages because Mm -hmm. more than ever, I feel like this past year, COVID, I don't know what the heck was going on. More people around, you know, like around their spouse more. I don't know. But like marriages have just been struggling. But that Mm -hmm. is the one thing I say that every, every instance that I've dealt with personally of a marriage that's struggling, one person is unwilling to say, I'm sorry. Yeah every time and it's just a humility that comes there to be able yes. to say i'm sorry but that's what i see is someone is just like dead set on their way and they're w- unwilling to say i messed up here or yeah. i could be better here and so i'm so glad you said that and fighting fair is also just so so important man so good such good stuff yeah Th- awesome. and there's so much more like, yeah, i feel like we didn't even is. cover half of it no yeah you're right there's so much to it and and i would say too like i know um has the single episode aired yet yeah uh, Yes, yeah, as of so when this when airs, this airs singleness, singleness. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm really glad that that you know we kicked off this I guess relationship series talking about that because mm-hmm. you know it's it's I just want to say I don't know what you guys are going to talk about in that one, but <laughs> I just want to say like the, the pressure to get married in Christian culture is absurd, and oh yeah, you can be single and be extremely healthy, and so I just wanted to say that you know if you are a single person and you're listening to a a podcast episode on marriage, don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Obviously it might help you prepare if that's your goal and you are actively looking. Well, sure. This stuff is amazing. It'll help you prepare for that one day, but also don't be discouraged. Like you are infinitely valuable and you are just perfect the way you are. You don't have to be married to kind of achieve this. And I'm sure that's what you guys have echoed Mm -hmm. in that episode, but um, marriage is beautiful and it's great and it's amazing. And, you know, I'll defend marriage until I'm dead. I think marriage is great, but at the same time, so is being single. So is being single. Um, That's great too. So I would just, I would just say one more thing. I think to the married people who are listening to this, I just want to remind everyone that reconciliation like is always possible. You know, that's the beauty of the gospel is that none of us as individuals are beyond restoration. And if we're living, you know, Christ centered marriages, Christ centered relationships, then that should extend to your relationship. So wherever you are right now, you know, if you're in a dark place, if you're in a place where you're hurting, like that's when we as your pastors want to resource you, even if we aren't necessarily equipped to do that. But we just, I think we're both just really passionate about seeing people in happy, healthy relationships. Yeah. And and I know you've seen a lot of people struggle this year. So just want to remind people like reconciliation, it's it's there. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just talking to a, a gal this week and you know, I said, reach out like because that's part of something I feel like we can do as mm-hmm. pastors and somebody that you know people that are married. Um, you know, we have a woman on staff. You feel more comfortable talking to her or myself like we're I think we just want to make ourselves available to yeah. help people thrive in their relationships and you know trust communication fighting fair and all these new practical tips we've given are really just kind of pillars in any relationship so I mean if you're struggling in relationships period I think you know Mm -hmm. we would we would want to help not only just in your marriage but we're just passionate about relationships being restored and and people being in good relationships with with each other and so yeah reach out if you're struggling or if you have more questions or concerns uh, or if you have anything you want to add something that's been maybe helpful in your marriage. Mm. We'd love to hear that yes. as well. Man, this episode, I'm all about this one. I love it. I love, I love it, so, it. Much. so good. Well, thanks again for joining with us on The Current. We'll see you next Friday right here in Real Talk on Real Topics. Grace and peace.